Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome on board. The end of January 2022 was pretty exciting for two big reasons. Reason number one, Air India was officially handed over to the Tatas. So that means after about seven decades, the airline returned back to its rightful owner. And reason number two, which is also what this video is all about, is that after years of study, research, taking inputs from various operators, Airbus finally implemented their new checklists, SOPs, flow patterns, and task sharing across the fleet around the world, except for Airbus 300s and Airbus 220. It was made effective on 28th January, time 0001 UTC. Now, what was the need for these changes, one might ask? Well, Airbus wanted shorter checklists to reduce workload during critical phases of flight. They wanted checklists for actual flight phases, so as to avoid the confusion of whether the checklist has begun or completed. Also, to have easier concept for newbies by eliminating down-to-the-line and below-the-line concept. For those who aren't aware, Airbus initially had few checklists that was divided by a line in between. For example, before start checklist was divided in two and a pilot would call out before start checklist down to the line. You would read out the checklist till the line, hold the checklist till the startup clearance was received. And once that was done, the pilot would call out again below the line. And uh, once you finish out the checklist, only then before start checklist was considered complete. And now, instead of having one checklist divided in two, we have two separate and updated checklists. So let's quickly go through the flow patterns and checklists. I'll be using the fly-by-wire mod for the Airbus 320. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, now, things to remember that the whole procedure, like I mentioned in my previous videos, is a beautiful choreography between the two pilots. It is sequenced in a way that neither of them will overlap with each other's responsibilities. So for this video, the left seat is CM1, who is also PF, that is pilot flying. The right seat is CM2, who is also PM, that is pilot monitoring. So let's just quickly go through it. Starting with the safety exterior inspection, CM2 will check out only three things. Wheel chocks, is checked in place. Landing gear doors, check the position of it. APU area is checked clear. Moving on to the cockpit. Preliminary cockpit preparation is going to be a cold and dark. Before we start powering up the airplane, we need to cross check a couple of things. So, is it the responsibility of CM2? Aircraft setup. Engine 1, 2 master levers off. Engine mode selector normal. Weather radar is off. Landing gear lever is down. Both wiper selectors off. Once these things are cross checked, we can start up with the DC power up. Batteries. Before we can start up the battery, if the airplane was not powered for beyond six hours, there's a very good chance the, the batteries might, might have been depleted. Both the battery switch, check off, cross check the voltage. The voltage should be above 25.5. If it is not, your battery will need a 20 minute charge cycle. How do we do that? Battery switch both to auto, external power on. And check on the elect page on the system display that the battery contactor is closed and the batteries are charging. After 20 minutes, battery switch is both off, cross check to about 25.5, and then you're good to go. So DC is powered up and we also have AC via external power. Next, cockpit lights. Then EFB initialization. We'll start up the EFB, that is the electronic flight back. Initialize the A cars, which we can't do in this airplane. And then FMGS pre-initialization. Three things to do. Check the engine and aircraft type. Second, check the navigation database for validity. Third, put the flight number from and to. Next part is aircraft acceptance. Now this is this is where the paperwork comes in, where the flight engineer will hand over the airplane to the captain and he'll have to do an acceptance. But before he can do that, he puts the recall button for three seconds. What that does is it basically pops up all the malfunctions that had appeared in the previous flight. Cross check the logbook, MEL, CDL items, aircraft configuration. Then we do the OEB check, that is the operational engineering bulletins. And then we accept the airplane. 
Now the airplane has been powered up by the batteries as well as the external power, but we need AC power of our own, which is done by the auxiliary power unit, APU. But before we can start the APU, we need to do the fire test for the APU. So radio panel, check on. We'll just cross check that the navigation light is off, select light is off, frequency set. APU fire push button check, it is in and guarded. Agent lights are all off, then APU fire test, press and hold. While we do that, we're going to cross check a couple of things like the APU fire warning should come on if the AC power is available, which in our case it is. Ecamm message, and there should be a continuous recurring chime, the alarm, master warning light, APU fire push button should be a red, squib and discharge light should be on. And once we're satisfied by that, we can start the APU, APU master switch on, wait for three seconds and then start. Once the APU is running, APU bleed can be taken. Next part is the preliminary performance determination. Now for this, both the pilots uh, do it simultaneously. First things first, we take the airfield information, that is the ATIS. We'd like to know what kind of, what runway is in use, what is the condition of the runway, what is the weather, temperature, pressure and everything. So let's assume uh, these are the ATIS values and then using that, we will initially calculate the takeoff performance with the expected takeoff weight. Cross check with each other and hold. So once that is done, uh, walk around by the pilot monitoring is done. But uh, before walk around, what the pilot monitoring does is he will cross check the couple of items. That is ECAM oxygen pressure. How much is it for two pilots? Hydraulic level should be in green. Engine oil quantity cross checked. Then we go down, flap lever position check speed brake check retracted and disarmed parking brake handle is on every time you use the parking brake it is always a good practice to cross check the accumulator pressure okay moving on uh, then we do the emergency equipment check there are a couple of things like the life vest uh, the protective breathing equipment fire extinguisher smoke goggles oxygen mask flashlights and you know, escape ropes and all of those once that is satisfied check the rain repellent cb panels cross check monitor if any of the cbs have been popped out if it is then cross check with the engineer and get it rectified and then the pilot monitoring goes out for uh, the walk around okay once the pilot monitoring has gone out for the walk around the pilot flying starts off with the cockpit preparation Starting with the overhead panel, a general Airbus lights off philosophy to be noted, uh, get rid of all the white lights. The crew supply on recorder panel, ground control switch on and uh, we can perform the CVR test but before we can do that, couple of switches again to be cross checked, loudspeaker off intercom switch set parking brake check on, CVR test, push and hold. Once we do that we get a tone and then there's a beep every 4 seconds. Going ahead, uh, we got the evac panel. Captain purser switch to captain and purser. All IR mode selectors to nav. When you come down, exterior lights, navigation light. Just cross check it is on. Here you see one and two because this airplane has two sets of uh, navigation light, and you can choose one based on even or odd days. Uh, that changes with the airline to airline. Signs, seat belts on, no smoking on. Emergency exit. Let's arm it. Going ahead, probe, window heat, auto, landing elevation, cross check, it is auto, back flow is as required, well, different variant of Airbus has different numbering, like for example, A320, some of the A320s have 141 passengers or less, you put it to low, if it is too hot or humid, put it to high, for all other reasons, it should be normal, and the moment uh, the pack is using APU bleed air, it doesn't matter what select, what position you choose, it will be on high by default, going ahead, uh, on the electric panel, we do the battery check once again because the last time the battery check was done by CM2, this time CM1 will do it. Put it to off, it should be about 25.5 and 25.5 is a number that assures that the battery is more than 50% charged. Fuel pumps, all white lights to be pushed. Hardware panels checked. 
Now we do the engine fire test. And then we cross check for the alarm sound, the master warning light, e cam display, and then the, the squib discharge fire lights all should be illuminated. And do it, uh, do the same for the other engine as well. Audio switching panel to norm. And then we come down here again, no white lights. Now the third occupant audio control panel, pull out the PA knob and make it full. So the CVR will even record the passenger announcement. Moving ahead, you come down, you do a U check, starting with the uh, integrated standby display. You set the barrel reference. You come down over here, check the clock, anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch to on. Come to the audio control panel over here. Everything is selected, come down, weather radar check, switching panel, everything in norm. Come down, thrust levers, idle, engine masters are off, mode selector is normal, cockpit door switch is normal, parking brake handle is on and uh, gravity gear extension is check stowed. Then on the right side, ATC panel check on uh, squawk 2000, that means that no squawk code has been assigned. And then you prepare the FMS. Okay, once the FMS is prepared, flight director switches on QNH, set hectopascals and set the QNH. Constraint switches on, VOR ADF selected to VOR. Cross check the FCU, uh, there are dots. You can set the initial altitude and same thing on the right side, the PM will do it on his side. And then we start off with the lateral console panel, oxygen mask check. Oxygen mask is done, PFD, ND, brightness as required, loudspeaker is checked. And uh, then we cross check the landing elevation on the ECAM uh, right over here. ECAM status is checked. Let's just take a look at the fuel on board. Cross check it with the uh, your flight plan. And once that is done, you do the departure briefing. And departure briefing has been changed by the Airbus as well. They go, it's more interactive uh, and uh, and I'll cover that in the other video. And once the departure briefing is done, we we'll ask for the cockpit preparation checklist. So cockpit preparation checklist, gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity, we just say 4000 kgs balanced from the fuel system display. Seat belts, check the ECAM on. Check the ECAM, not the switch. Adirs, check the FMGS. Nav, you see all three nav in green. You don't have to check the overhead panel. Check the FMGS, say nav. Adirs is done. Barrel reference, call out the QNH, set. So it goes something like this gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity. 4000 kgs balanced. Seat belts on, adhere, nav, barrel reference, QNH 1013. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. And once we're done with the cockpit preparation checklist, we continue on with the before start clearance. So, in the before start clearance, uh, we get the final load sheet in hand. We cross check the fuel on board once again. We uh, re uh, recompute the takeoff data. FMS data is set. And then the pilot flying takes the performance takeoff page on his side. Pilot monitoring will take flight plan page on his side. And the pilot monitoring further confirms that the air conditioning ground unit and the external power unit are both disconnected. If they're not, get in touch with the ground personnel and ask them to disconnect. In the meantime, let's get our pushback truck uh, ready. Then we request for the startup clearance from the ATC. The moment you get the clearance, Here's the flow pattern for the PF and the PM. Cabin crew, arm all doors, cross check and report. Beacon light on, windows doors check closed, slides check armed, thrust levers idle, accumulator pressure is checked, parking brake is set. On the PM side, after the startup clearance is received, ATC just set it for operations, windows doors closed, slides checked. And then the pilot flying will call for before start checklist. Before start checklist goes as follows. Parking brake on, takeoff speeds and thrust. 
V1, VR, V2 and flex temperature the pilot flying will read out from the FMS. Pilot monitoring will check on the PFD. Once that is done, now the pilot monitoring will call out from the FMS and the pilot flying will check on the PFD. Windows closed. Beacon on. Before start checklist complete. To the ground personal that we are ready for pushback. But before we do that, extremely important, check that nose wheel steering disconnect memo is displayed. Parking brake handle then put it to off, start pushback. Once the pushback is done, parking brake set on and now we can start both engines. Okay, and for starting engines, thrust levers idle, engine mode selector to ignition or start. And you can see the PSI above 30 and all the amber crosses are gone. Engine 2 master lever on, starting engine 2. Engine 2 is up and running, idle parameters checked, repeat the same for engine number 1. Okay, after starting both engine, here's the flow. Engine mode selector normal, APU bleed off, anti-eyes as required, APU you can put it off, ECAM status, check that the nozzle steering is not displayed, ask the ground engineer to disconnect. So ground you're clear to disconnect, display hand signals on the left. And the pilot monitoring action, ground spoilers arm, rudder trim check 0 flaps, you can set to flaps 1, pitch trim set ecam status checked and then pilot flying will call for after start checklist after start checklist goes as follows anti eyes the call is engines off wings off pitch trim I check the trim will and then call out 28 percent rudder trim for airbus 320 up to plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees is acceptable at zero over here so we call out neutral after start checklist complete. Now we request for taxi. The pilot monitoring will request a taxi. Once that is set, taxi flow, exterior lights, taxi, runway turn off on, parking brake handle off. Let's quickly do the brakes check. Brakes check is set. We'll do the flight controls check now. And then the pilot monitoring will set auto brakes to max terrain on his side because a cap pilot flying will take weather on his side. Squawk is just confirmed again. Radar and predictive wind shear will set it. Takeoff configuration push button test and takeoff memo will cross check there's no blue. We'll receive the cabin report then. Then we'll ask for the taxi checklist. Taxi checklist flight controls checked. Both sides has checked. Flaps config one. Radar and PWS on and auto. Check on the NDF pedestal. Engine mode selector normal. ECAM memo take off no blue. Taxi checklist complete. Now we do the before takeoff uh, scan flow. Takeoff runway is confirmed. Approach path is cleared. External lights. Let's put the landing lights on. Nose wheel to take off. Strobe lights on and uh, we'll ask for the lineup checklist uh, PM's action will check the brake temperature brake fan if it is running you can put it off pack 1 and 2 if not required if you are doing a pack soft takeoff this is the time when you put it off but we'll keep it on TCAS mode selector to TARA engine mode selector as required and then advise the cabin crew PM will say all crew takeoff stations ask for the lineup checklist Line of checklist, takeoff runway, 27, confirm, 27, TCAS, TARA, packs 1 and 2 are on, 
Learn and checklist complete. Okay, and for the takeoff, I'll get back in the next video. Thank you for watching. Ciao.